views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hola everyone, welcome to Open, the one and only show bringing the best of the Bronx, New York and the world straight to you. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche every Friday. Here's what's coming up in today's show. Leading things off, we share fun events for the entire family to get out and enjoy this holiday weekend. And following that, we'll get an inside look into this year's 7th Annual Summer Art and Music Festival taking place at Soundview Park. Then the summer is heating up, but we'll cool down with some tasty recipes when Koki the chef joins us. And later on in the show, Bobby C updates us with the latest headlines in the world of sports. And finally, our open artist spotlight shines on Brie, who's using her powerful vocals and dance to set herself apart from the rest. So sit back y prepárate, mi gente. All this and more is coming your way because now we are officially open. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host, y Café con Leche for the next hour. Always inviting you to get social with us online, mi gente, that's right. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV and like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, don't forget while you're there to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, FB, and Snapchat at Rina Valentin. It's that time again, mi gente. That's right, it's time to take out your pen and papers for today's Open Weekend Preview. First for you to check out First Fridays. Uh, this month's First Fridays at the Bronx Museum of the Arts is taking the fun outdoors with a screening of Africa. United, a film about the story of three Rwanda children and the dream of taking part in the opening ceremony of the 2010 Football World Cup in Johannesburg. After the screening, enjoy special performances by Dara Mir, Gonzalez, and Havana entrants. Uh, all of this and more is taking place on uh, Friday, July 1st, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Bronx Museum of the Arts, which is located on 2040 Grand Concourse in the Bronx. And for more information, visit bronxmuseum.org events. Next up, family art project, Butterfly Habitat, that brings the kids to the beautiful gardens at Wave Hill and, well, to see the butterflies. Learn about the local butterfly species, watch them fly from flower to flower, sipping the nectar, and also get creative by making a butterfly habitat hat. Filled with flowers and insects in, 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 in an active landscape. That's right. This unique experience is taking place on Saturday, July 2nd at Wave Hill, located on 649 West 249th Street in the Bronx. And for more information, visit wavehill.org slash events. And finally, for you to explore, a Royal Shinding and a Brooklyn Beanstalk, part of their uh, the Peer Kid series at Brooklyn Bridge, Bridge Park. It's a day full of storytelling, arts and crafts, and performances. Brooklyn Beanstalk, a circus arts program, will provide an introduction to circus activities for everyone in the family. So you'll learn juggling, spinning plates, hula hooping, acrobatics, and so much more, and all under the supervision of professionals. And all this fun and more is taking place on Sunday, July 3rd, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Brooklyn Bridge Park in Pier 6 Lawns. And for more information, you can visit brooklynbridgepark.org slash events. And there you have it, some fun events for the entire family to enjoy to kick off this holiday weekend. All right, in other news, the CUNY School of Journalism was awarded a $1 million grant from the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment. BronxNet reporter Veronica Guiti has the story. Let's take a look. 
The CUNY J School received great news as the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment has granted them $1 million towards the Center for Community and Ethnic Media. The program has been running successfully at their school since 2012. The program is geared to assisting journalists from different cultural backgrounds and providing the tools they need to stay current in today's growing digital age. Commissioner Julie Menon was there to make the announcement. We know how important the community and ethnic newspapers are to New York City and to readers. In fact, the 4.5 million New Yorkers who are reading community and ethnic newspapers. So at the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, we really want to be able to support these publications, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Rong Chow is one of the many journalists who will be able to benefit from the new program. Yeah, uh, I am a print uh, reporter for sure, but these days a print reporter has to do all sorts of things, you know, video, audio and things, uh, but we don't often have that training. Uh, and when I was at school, I was trained as a print reporter, so the scenario kind of like scared me, and um, indeed my boss did ask me to do some video a few months ago. I was like, no, I, I don't know how to do it. So the grant and the workshops comes from it um, is really like timely help to us. We serve the, the city of New York and the people who live and work here and it's the capital of the media world and so we want to make sure that when we're training people that we're training people from all walks of life and all different communities and uh, it should be open and accessible to as many people as possible so it just seemed like a natural extension of our work given how important the community and ethnic media outlets are to the city. Uh, empowering this media means empowering these communities. Uh, empowering this media means uh, you are uh, s uh, making it uh, like the transition of people and their engagement, their civic engagement, their political engagement. You are speeding it up and you're facilitating it. In recognition of the city's support, the J School will rename its broadcast facility the Made in New York Broadcast Center, but will continue with the same dedication and zeal for molding today's brightest journalist. Classes are scheduled to start sometime this year and they want to hear from you. If you have any suggestions or want to take part in the classes, you can reach out to the email below. For BronxNet, I'm Veronica Guiti. And thank you, Veronica. We uh, have to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll have more open when we return. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. for something to do this summer? If you're a middle school student at any of these schools, you may qualify to participate in the Bronx Gear Up Network Summer Academy at no cost to you or your family. From July 5th to August 5th, participants in the Bronx Gear Up Summer Academy study science and math or humanities on the campuses of Lehman College and Fordham University. Students participate in engaging educational field trips and workshops at the New York Botanical Garden, Wave Hill, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Lehman College Art Gallery. For more information, talk to the Academic College Readiness Coach at your school and sign up today. Remember, education is the key to your future. Hello and welcome back to Open. Uh, you know, we're always inviting you to get social with us. That's right. Tweet us while we're on air at BronxNet TV. That's with two T's. And you can tweet me too while you're there at Lena Valentine. We'd love to hear from you. 
On uh, Sunday, July 10th, uh, our friends of Soundview Park will be hosting the seventh annual Summer Art and Music Festival. And the day is sure to have something that everyone can enjoy. Activities will include live performances, art exhibitions, fitness programs, waterfront activities, and more. And here now to tell us more is the founder and vice president of the Friends of Soundview Park, Lucy Aponte. Hello and welcome. Hi, Mina. How are you? Welcome back to thank Open. You. And thank you for your service <coughs> to our community and the thank parks you. and the parks. Uh, this is the seventh year uh, yeah. for, of this event. And um, just, you know, let's just share a little bit with everyone who the Friends of Soundview Park is. Well, the Friends of Soundview Park is a group that was uh, formed in 2010 and uh, has been working to uh, make Soundview Park and the community a, a beautiful place and a better place to be. We um, bring performances there, concerts, we um, take care of the park, we have a lot of volunteers who join us, and we connect with other organizations to create great programming at Soundview Park. So why is it important for our community to have these events in the park? Uh, the reason why it's important, it's, it's a neighborhood that is, ha has um, um, low-income people and uh, who need a place to go uh, with their family and to have positive and good entertainment, to have good things going on for the community, for families, to bring them together in, in positive ways. You know, and also just the parks itself, right? Because I noticed that the, the parks, I mean, even though this is the seventh annual, the, the parks seem to be a lot more engaged in, in kind of in bringing everybody to the park. And, and I, I'm, I'm a tree lover. Mm -hmm. I'm a tree hugger. Yeah. Um, I'm a nature lover. Yeah. And so, uh, yes, we, we can have festivals and close down streets, but it's quite different when you're actually inside of a park. Yes. And so I just wondered what that partnership is with the park. Well, with, uh, we, we take care of Soundview Park. Right. So the Friends of Soundview. Um, we take care of it and we provide entertainment and festivals and activities to bring the community in and engage them in the community. It's a waterfront park. It's beautiful. I mean, to have an opportunity to, to be at the waterfront, to have performances at the waterfront, to have activities going on at the waterfront, and to bring the community together in a place that is so beautiful with nature, and uh, all of the, um, uh, the wildlife is coming back, the river is becoming healthy, so I like that she's saying the wildlife is coming back. Well, yes. you know, they, they're preserving it and, and they're refurbishing. Oh, no, that, that wouldn't be the proper term. Refurbishing is more technological, uh, uh, technological. But um, they're, you're, um, what would, what's the word we're looking for? Like they're rejuvenating it. Yeah. They're yeah. refreshing it. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful because it's our land to take care of. It's gorgeous. Years back, that um, Soundview Park was known as a place that you don't go to. Right. And now it's been remade it's absolutely stunning we get people who come from everywhere even tourists who come they hear about our festival and they come from holland or from you know other places and you know it's nice to see that that's great so what what should people uh, look forward to this year at this year's event is well, there something different do you do well, something different every year I, well what we do every year is that we make it bigger and so this year is going to be even bigger with many more performers going on. They're going to uh, children's entertainment. There's going to be entertainment for families. Everything is going to be fr family friendly. Um, activities at the waterfront with, uh, with the Bronx River Alliance. Um, there's going to be- So if there's activities in the waterfront, is, does that uh, refer, are you referring to canoes and water activities? Well, well that's what we're planning on that's having canoes there. It, nice. you know, it all depends on the water. Right, so, right, yeah. nice, But nice. Um, we have you know, the meditation garden. So we're going to have uh, Hatha Yoga meditation, Zumba, we're going to have a muralist there also um, with the kids and doing murals. Um, uh, artists doing all kinds of activities with the kids um, and the families. It's for adults and for kids. It's not just for kids, it's adults and kids. No, it's so great. And it's, it's for adults who want to be kids. Yeah. <laughs> that would be me. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I'm forever young, forever Listen, young. I'm, I'm still a kid. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. the idea is to engage in activity, right? And so mm -hmm. this is loaning itself back to, of course, spending quality time together with your family, but um, 
we here in the Bronx uh, advocate, or at least here at Bronx, that we're advocating the importance of just being physically active without necessarily having to work out or feeling mm -hmm. like you're working out. I mean, canoeing, you're working out your arms, right? Yes. And well, uh, we're going to have a walk also. Okay. Yes. Well, there so you have a walk a, and the a, yoga. A walk. We're going to have the meditation, Hatha Yoga meditation, and we're also going to have Zumba. And so, you know, there's a lot, of, you know, for um, healthy um, activities as well as um, art and, and, and creative activities going on in the performances, musicians and singers and dancers. And so it's that. a full day. It starts at? It starts at 10 o'clock and it goes till 6 and perform. Well, there are going to be performances going on throughout the park as well as uh, on the stage. So basically, you can walk the park, and there's like different stations of different activities going on. Going on. Rina, you gotta go. <laughs> you gotta. Go. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. like, she's like, Rina, you gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. It sounds like something my daughter and I would enjoy. So I'm, yeah. I'm most likely going to go, providing it doesn't rain. Yeah. Well, the rain date is the following Sunday, July 17th. Oh, so you do have a rain date. We have a they rain date. That too. We're not gonna <laughs> let this go. <laughs> No, it sounds well. It sounds yeah. lovely, and the fact that it's on the water, and again, just the fact that we're appreciating the parks and the water and the river, and just our beautiful beloved Bronx and, yes. and our family and our community, bringing everybody together and and just showing them what a good time is, uh, and being physically active without necessarily having to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You have nature out there, and you have a. This is a huge park. There's a lot, uh, you know, that you can do in this park, and it's beautiful. So people should come and see it, what we have to offer. And there's going to be more coming. That's great. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know before uh, we go? Well, just to make sure to come, it's on Sunday, July 10th, and it starts at 10 o'clock. And again, we're going to have a lot of artists there uh, exhibiting their work as well as doing work with the kids. So it's definitely a day, from the sounds of it, that you plan to spend the entire day because there's going to be something to do throughout the entire day. Throughout it's not day. just shopping and the festival aspect for the artists. I mean, we, we love when, mm -hmm. when we support our local artists as well. Mm -hmm. However, there's going to be physical activities and, and entertainment and waterfront, and you can yes. make a picnic out of it. it it's like, it's, it sounds lovely. It's, it is. <laughs> Liz. Well, is. thank you for coming here and sharing it with our viewers. Thank Lucia you. Ponte. Once again, the 7th Annual Summer Art and Music Festival is taking place on Sunday, July 10th at Soundview Park, which is located on Lafayette Avenue at, at Metcalf Avenue in the Bronx. And for more information, you can visit nycgovparks.org slash events. And so the fifth annual film festival showcased 16 unique short films and documentaries and BronxNet's cameras were there to capture the story. Let's take a look. Many various upcoming and well-known Dominican filmmakers as well as film lovers attended the fifth annual Dominican Film Festival. The festival's program showcased 16 unique short films and documentaries in relations to Dominican politics, social life, and its history. The documentary Nana was one of the many films that touched on important social subjects, specifically immigration. My documentary talks a lot about the immigrant experience and how you sacrifice everything to provide for your family that's in another city. So there's a lot of love and there's a lot of distance and separations and then reunions. So I'm really excited to be here. I know Tatiana, her brother Cesar, is a very, very good friend of mine. Um, I've stayed with their family in the Dominican Republic and I have known her while she made this film. So I was just very excited to be a part of watching its New York debut. Director Luis Camilo's documentary, Size Doesn't Matter, is another interesting film that speaks about the life of a 400 pound woman who discusses the complexities of trying to confidently embrace her weight. Many filmmakers like Lewis are excited to give audiences a first-hand look at their work. It is amazing to, to have it in, in the Dominican Film Festival. I'm uh, a proud Dominican who came here a couple of years ago, and after many years of not doing my passion, I went to Cannes, and now I'm here. I'm just blessed. The objective of this festival is not only to showcase Dominican cinema, 
but also to inform New York audiences about Dominican culture. I, I think film and the arts in general is just a great way to experience other cultures that, that one might not experience without traveling. So I think this is a great opportunity to see people and to meet new friends. The fifth annual film festival was able to successfully entertain and inform New York City film lovers. For more information on the Dominican Film Festival, be sure to visit their website, dominicanfilmfestival.com. This is Cherie Lewis for BronxNet. Thank you, Cherie. We are taking a quick break, but coming up, we'll cool down with some refreshing summer recipes. So stay tuned. neighbors and best friends. <laughs> I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener and loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. If you want to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, BronxNet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos. Hello and welcome back to Open Goki the Chef teaches fun and educational cooking and nutritional classes, nutrition classes, excuse me, instructed by a group of traveling chefs uh, with the help of the friendly mascot, Koki. He's not here with us today, but we do have, uh, well, their mission is to improve resources in low-income communities uh, where healthy food is not easily accessible. But Instead of the cookie, we have the cookie's founder, and uh, we are here. She's going to actually be here to share some wonderful program and prepare some summer snowball recipes. Please welcome cookies, uh, the chef's founder, CEO, Tania Lopez. Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm like stumbling because I was like, oh, the cookie's not here, the cookie's <laughs> not here. But instead, we've got, we have the founder of the cookie, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just us that's good, right? Yeah, no, well, yeah, you know, you, you, you're the mama, you're the mama. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Well, Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. And so um, I understand you're going to be teaching us uh, some, uh, it looks lovely already. I don't know yeah. what you're going to teach us. I'm just like, oh, wow, what a refreshing table and a refreshing setup so well, actually this is uh, all summer fruits and it's very good for you it uh, keeps you hydrated has lots of vitamins and it's great to eat it as a as an appetizer or as a drink when you're having a party it's uh it, it's very refreshing for people who are who are vegetarians or vegans and don't want to eat all the other appetizers that you know that doesn't go well with their diet. So I'm here to show you how to make uh, water me uh, melon balls, melon actually. Melon balls, melon so balls. So it's very, very easy. And you're going to do this with me too, All right? I'll do this with okay. you, sure. So you just press down mm -hmm. and go around. And to, like, I always tell the kids, it's going around the world. And going around you, the world. And then you add it in here. So okay. you want to give it a try? So this is really cute. Uh, and honestly, it, it's something that I think um, you can enjoy with your kids making, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it looks fun. And I like the around the world. And obviously, I haven't done this before because <laughs> I got a half of a ball. But 
needless to say, I, I'm afraid to put my hands on it just because. Okay. You know. um, <laughs> shall shall okay. I do it one more time? One I'm more like, time. Right, I'm going to get down, it right. I'm down. going to get a full circle. I know I will. That's it. There you there go. There we go. I got it now. I got it. I got it. And it's so pretty and colorful looking. Yes. I noticed you're using. Um, three different melons, right? So yeah. we're doing the honeydew, the Honeydew, uh, it has lots of fiber, mm -hmm. and the cantaloupe, which it has uh, lots of vitamin C, 78% vitamin C, which is great, and 92% water and watermelons, which helps the body keep hydrated. So these are perfect for summer. And you want to try the watermelon sure, too? Sure, we'll try the watermelon. We'll add some watermelon Because it's different there. texture, right? So yes, <laughs> it is, and a different taste. This is really fun too. It yes, really is. lots of fun for the kids. So just to out make. of curiosity, what made you decide to name your organization Cookie the Chef? Well, I'm I'm crazy about cookies. I think cookies are an amazing. Um, in um, I was gonna say instant, but it's actually a frog. It's a wonderful reptile. I was always fascinated with frogs, but cookie was the one that really goes close to my heart. So um, is that because you're Puerto Rican? Yeah, that too. That, yeah, that would, that, that would be it, right? <laughs> That's you know it. that cookies you know, only live in Puerto Rico, right? You know that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And their melody always helps me go to sleep. So i just fascinated by them since I was a little girl. So I decided to use him as a, a sort of like an inspiration to other kids from all cultures and introduce Cookie too to all cultures. And um, at the same time, um, dress him up as a chef and make it fun because kids need to see a mascot for healthy eating, not just a mascot for unhealthy food. Um, and that's interesting. That's mm -hmm. a very interesting point. Let's talk a little bit about that. You're really into this, huh? Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm like, yes, no, go ahead. I say, scoop up melon balls. Here, honeydew, too. <laughs> oh, we got to switch over to honeydew. <laughs> I'm going to take your job. Or I'm going to be one of the traveling chefs. Press down. There you go. Okay, well we this usually one, take this out the seeds. Yeah, I was gonna we, say um, we can spoon it out the seeds. Okay, it's very easy to spoon yeah, out. Or you can use the melon. Maybe we shouldn't do this one. This one's got dripping seeds. Yeah, put it on the side. Or right, we'll put it on the side. Yeah. So you can take this corner around here where there's no seeds. Okay. You can always scoop them out. There you go. And then the next step for for the melon balls is adding honey. Mm -hmm. A little bit of honey, coconut, shredded coconut. I toasted the coconut. And uh, to give it a little more flavor. You can tell I'm becoming a pro, like, just in a matter <laughs> of seconds, because I'm, like, <laughs> scooping up balls, like. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add the honey. Okay, so uh, my daughter loves melons. So she's sitting in the audience right now mm -hmm. going, oh, yes, mommy. Add the honey. Okay, so we're adding honey. Mm -hmm. So we're going to drizzle honey. There you go. I'm going to take this messed up ball there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not really messed up. It's just, it has seeds, so I'll just eat it. How's that? <laughs> I'll add some shredded coconut. Okay. Well, we can do it. I, I love coconut. These are toasted, so they taste amazing. Oh, my gosh. This yeah. looks amazing. So And some mint to just, like, give it a little refreshing taste. So, um, mint is very so good for Mint and digestion. kiwi. What's the kiwi for? The kiwi is just to add a little look for the drink. Okay. So it, it'll, instead of adding oh, a lemon, okay. you add a kiwi. Okay. All right. And kiwi is an interesting fruit. Uh, okay. So as this well. is a refreshing drink. It's a melon drink. Mm -hmm. And you can just add some there. And if you want to decorate it really nicely, you can add some extra cantaloupe um, balls or watermelon balls to it too. Okay. So what she did was w she had uh, pre melon balls already. Um, made and mm -hmm. she put it in the water with some mint and now to make the glass look I guess the actual yeah to make it look drink, attractive right this is very simple and mm -hmm. very elegant for yes. like a barbecue yes yes for July the 4th is perfect mm -hmm. and um, and she even brought little umbrellas yes just to decorate it or you know look at that so just we can put it there, or you can use it to pick out the melon. Oh my gosh, how brilliant is that? So we, the actual umbrella is a toothpick, for those mm -hmm. of you who don't know. So it, it could either dress up the drink, or you can just put it in the actual... There you go. Yes. You have a little island there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's beautiful. This yes. is beautiful. I just want to share that with everyone. <laughs> In case you're, you're, let me see if I have to pick it up. How's that? Can you get that, William? William's my director, in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah? All right. So um, this is absolutely refreshing, and you already shared with everybody the vitamins um, involved. And not only that, it's a great family activity. Yes, it is. You get the kids involved. They'll have lots of fun making the balls, and they get to learn coordination. Um, they get to uh, be connected more with the food. So that's one of the things that we do with our classes. We only not only teach about food and how to put it together, but the connection and also the vitamins and nutrition and how fun you can make it put it together and it looks adorable it does and so you do how is it that you guys operate you you travel to schools because I, I know mm -hmm. that you have these children programs and so just share a little bit about that yeah we travel to schools we travel to private schools public schools um, festivals organization organizations parties we go to Brooklyn Queens uh, New Jersey Philadelphia um, we're like all over the place. We definitely like to spread the word and now we have a puppet so it's, it even makes it more fun. Oh, so you have a cookie puppet now? Yeah, now oh we have a goodness. puppet, yeah. We should have brought the puppet. The puppet <laughs> would have been making the watermelon, <laughs> right? <laughs> True. <laughs> so, um, do, how, if an organization wanted to um, bring in your services, how do they go about doing that? Well, they can contact us on Cookie the Chef. Um, dot com and we'll give everyone a unique consultation everyone is you know every project is unique so don't feel discouraged please call us or write to us and we'll definitely tailor the the package to what your school needs that's wonderful thank you so much for coming You're up welcome. with this concept and for bringing melons my daughter's in her glory <laughs> sitting in the audience <laughs> yes because you know these, these are summer fruits so thank you Tanya. Tanya, you're welcome. All right, once again, for more information on Coqui the Chef, you can visit their website by going to coquithechef.com. All right, don't go anywhere. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. This makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. This is Bobby C. and the journey of the first Brooklyn-born net starts right here in Coney Island. Welcome, everyone. We're thrilled to have you out here in Coney Island, the home of Isaiah Whitehead, as we introduce him officially as the newest member of the Brooklyn Nets. These young people are seeing a Brooklyn-born player coming to the Brooklyn Nets. It's the right message at the right time. We welcome you, we thank you, and we know he's going to be inspiring to all of these young people here. I think he's a humble guy, but I, I think he wants, he's hungry and he, he wants to prove something. I think I think there are questions about him. Obviously, he, you know, he'd be a first-round pick or a lottery pick if people thought it was great. So that, that's that feeds into what we're doing. I'm real confident. I mean, that's that's one of the traits about me. I'm just real competitive and real confident. I mean, I, I would never back down from anyone. So, I mean, I, I feel like I can play on a level. His size is, you know, that that's important. His versatility and and his ability to score the ball um, away from the ball. But I, what really attracted me personally to him was his passing ability. I think I was very impressed at how he, how he, especially in the pick and roll, how he can make different reads, his, his basketball IQ, so um, we're excited about that. And it's amazing, I mean, 
I'm, spe I'm still speechless about it. Just like I said, it probably won't hit me until I'm on a Barclays floor and I mean, it's friends and family in the crowd. What an awesome afternoon for a New York City native that gets to live his pro dream right here at home. Congrats to Isaiah on making the NBA. The young point guard may also have a chance to get some real playing time for a rebuilding squad. The Nets, after attempting to trade point guard Jared Jack and facing a Thursday deadline on his team option, decided to waive him instead. The Nets will now work out free agent playmaker Brandon Jennings today at UCLA per ESPN. Meanwhile, the New York Knicks have decided rebuilding is not where they are, despite missing the playoffs last season. The orange and blue are in win-now mode. The team and Joe Kim Noah, New York native himself, are nearing an agreement on a four-year, $72 million deal that will reunite the free agent and center with newest Nick point guard Derek Rose. The Knicks are also shopping for a shooting guard on the radar. Austin Rivers, Evan Turner, Eric Gordon, Courtney Lee, and former Nick Jamal Crawford. Most, most reports expect Crawford, now 36, to return to the Knicks. He's a three-time sixth man of the year, coming off another nice season for the L.A. Clippers. On the WNBA hardwood, the New York Liberty are in Phoenix tonight and in L.A. on Sunday. The team will be back home Wednesday to face Seattle. In soccer, NYCFC will host the New York Red Bulls in their big-time rivalry on Sunday at Yankee Stadium. That game gets going at 12 noon. The Copa America final last weekend saw Chile repeat over Argentina, this time in PKs as the world's greatest star, Lionel Messi, missed on his. The failure has pushed Messi to strongly consider retirement from the international game. I will say this. He played very well in the loss and carried a team that wasn't as good as its opponent. The Mets have tried to make adjustments to their struggling lineup in the last week. The shakeup started with sending down the struggling Michael Conforto, one of the top young hitters in the game today, and promoting 2011 first rounder Brandon Nimmo. The Amazons also brought back shortstop Jose Reyes, signing the troubled free agent and having him work his way back through the minors. He is eyed as a utility man and perhaps the team's starting third baseman in the second half of the season. As for Nimmo, he has played well since making his pro debut. He had a nine pitch at that ended with a single Thursday night at City Field and eventually came around to score with Alejandro Diaz during the seventh inning. The Mets would go on to top the Chicago Cubs 4-3 in a National League Championship Series rematch. The club is 5-5 over their last 10 games and is now 41-37, good for second in the NL East. Washington has a six-game lead for the division. The Mets will continue their homestand this weekend against the Cubs. The Yankees are eight games back in the American League and have also gone 5-5 five five over their last 10, moving to 39-39 and 39 with a pair of back-to-back -back wins against first place Texas Wednesday and Thursday at the stadium, closing the homestand on a nice note. Shortstop Didi Gregorius has been superb. He capped a six-run comeback in the ninth with a walk-off home run Wednesday night in a 9-7 final that also included two home runs from Brian McCann. Didi followed that magical win by homering again Thursday afternoon and then set the table in the ninth, bunting over Chase Headley, who would dash home on a pass ball in the ninth for a 2-1 win. The Bronx Bombers showing some signs of life in the weeks before the All-Star break now embarked on a 10-game road trip that begins tonight in San Diego. As for the Pinstripers homestand, the week included a special tribute for the late, great Mickey Mantle last Friday night. Here's our exclusive chat with the Mantle boys. What would be the way you'd want your father to be most remembered, especially by, you know, you talk about generations maybe moving forward that will learn about him. So what would be the way we'd want him remembered? Well, most? for him, it, he was always just wanted to be remembered as a uh, great teammate. But I think what we like to know, too, and he never really thought he was, but, you know, he was, for us, you know, he was a great father, too. But as a player, it's just, you know, he played with, uh, you know, courage. And uh, you know, I always said, you know, he, uh, you know, fell with courage and, you know, Ray, or rose with uh, grace. Uh, and uh, so I'm, it's just stuff like that. He just, you know, and of course, like you said, he never quit. And uh, every game was, you know, he was there to win. To me, anyway, what he is is the way he played, you know. I mean, he played, you know, hurt most of the time. And really, I don't know how long he even got to play without – you know, on two good legs. And so, uh, you know, even though he had such a great career and all that, you know, you still hear people saying, you know, what what could have been. And, you know, every time there's a new ball player out, you know, they're always comparing to, to Mickey Mantle. And so yes, that like we did feels that. great. 
A very cool bobblehead of the Mick and a very cool night at the stadium for Yankee fans. A time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Today is the anniversary of the Derek Jeter dive against the Boston Red Sox. That was July 1st, 2004. Where does the time go? July the 1st is also the day that former Mets star Bobby Bonilla of the Bronx gets paid. Near the end of his career, the Mets agreed to buy out his contract and pay him $1.5 one nine million annually for 25 years starting in 2011 cha-ching in tennis Wimbledon action is underway the renowned grass court tournament runs through July 10th Novak Djokovic and Serena Williams are early favorites in the men's and women's singles respectively from the NHL ice like the NBA free agency opens today the New Jersey Devils already scored with the trade acquisition of left winger Taylor Hall on Wednesday and the New York Rangers could be players for a move either via trade sign and trade or free agency itself Itself. Some reports suggest that the Broadway Blue Shirts could deal Dan Girardi and Mark Stahl. This weekend, sports fans will see Giants defensive stalwart Jason Pierre-Paul on PSAs talking about what fireworks can do if not handled correctly on the 4th. Been almost one year since JPP's accident. He's done some job in turning his career around, and hopefully his message is a powerful one to others. According to Consumer Product Safety Commission, 11 people have died in fireworks-related incidents since 2014, and over 10,000 more had to go to the hospital with injuries. It was a sad week in sports with the passing of legends Pat Summit, one of the game's great college basketball coaches, and Buddy Ryan, the former NFL head coach and father of Rex Ryan. The two will be dearly missed and have left a lasting legacy. More on Pat Summit in the C-List. <clears throat> In my book, sports has always been a place where dreams can become reality. Young men like Isaiah Whitehead can aspire to play in the NBA and not only realize their goals, but perhaps even get a chance to do it at home. Sports is also a place for trendsetters and those that pave the way for others to realize their dreams. That's Patricia Sue Head Summit's legacy. She died Tuesday from complications of early onset Alzheimer's disease. But make no mistake about it, she's the greatest college basketball coach of our era and perhaps the best of all time, joining the combo with greats like John Wooden. Summit was, Summit was just 64 years young and her 38 years on the hardwood, she won 1,098 games more than any other D1 coach, man or woman, and led Tennessee to eight national championships. Summit began her historic run in 1974, two years after Title IX legislation leveled the playing field for athletes of both genders by mandating equal opportunity for female athletes in academia. Under her leadership, the Lady Vols never had a losing season and the program had a 100% gradua graduation rate, excuse me, for those that played under her guidance. But her place in history deserves even more acknowledgement for her understanding that women in sports needed to stand strong and united. And that's why she has always made sure to help other young women on the rise. When she was offered a job coaching the men at Tennessee, Tennessee, she said, why is that considered a step up? She was a special woman and she made a difference on and off the basketball court. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. She really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How could you not love him? It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. 
I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Hello, good people of the Bronx and beyond. Welcome to A Life in Art. Welcome back, everyone. It's now time for this week's Open Artist Spotlight. The Open Artist Spotlight is made possible in part with public funds from the Bronx Council on the Arts through the New York State Council on the Arts Decentralization Program. Our Open Artist Spotlight features a talented singer whose powerful vocals and dance moves places in her, it moves her into a place that's a category all by herself. Here now to sing, Ignite. Please welcome to the Open Artist Stage, Brie! Why do the bad things always feel so good? Attracted like a magnet, and you know you got me hooked. We're amazing, we're blazing, we go up in flames. I can't take it, it's contagious. Once you say my name, I see sparks fly. When you put your hand Chains on me, baby. Strike the match and we ignite. Mm -hmm. Baby, strike the match and we ignite. Mm -hmm. Let our This fever coming over me We're amazing when we're blazing We go up in flames I can't take it, it's contagious Once you say my name I see sparks fly When you put your hands on me I feel my body come back to life Chains on me, baby. Strike the match and we ignite. Oh, baby, strike the match and we ignite. Oh, when our bodies collide, do it one more time. 
your touch sets a wildfire and I just can't say no 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 I see sparks fly when you put your hands on me I feel my body come back to life go and put your hands on me baby strike the match and we having my melon balls <laughs> listening to you well I, yeah your voice was refreshing the melon balls yes. are refreshing I, I warmed up with a melon ball myself yeah no. <laughs> it's very very good with the coconut yes. right oh my gosh I didn't get to taste it on air but I'm like oh my gosh who knew that so coconut good. would make it taste like that so, so. good so simple <laughs> so anyway but this segment is about you my dear mm -hmm. and that was so lovely and I know that um well you actually have this style that incorporates dance into your music and um thank you for soothing our way into that next yes, yes. that next right you, yeah i had to i had to calm everyone down a little and then bump you back up right we're gonna yeah. bump it back up yeah i'm um, just you know share with everyone a little bit about your journey because you've been doing this since you were like six years old yeah so i've been i've been singing but i started doing musical theater that's how it all started and i went to performing arts high school and performing arts college and then i met i like to call him the man of my dreams my mm -hmm. partner in crime and he kind of inspired me to start writing music and we started writing together and the next song that you hear, which is my first single, we wrote um, back in August, so it's almost been a year. We've written it, and we were like, this is it. This is the one, and we just built off it, and now we're starting it up. We're, we're trying to get me out there as much as I can and get my music heard by as much people as we can, and so far we've gotten really, really positive feedback, so I'm hoping everyone really likes it. Yeah, well, we loved Ignite, I'll tell you that. Thank that you. That was beautiful. That Thank was so beautiful. Much. That was beautiful. And what I really found most interesting about re uh, your background is that you actually come from character development. Yeah. Now, I'm a character actor, so I'm like, yeah, I like <laughs> yes. that. I like <laughs> that. I like that. So I, 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 I'm really curious to see what, what you're going to include um, as we close out the show. Yeah, I totally. Say, you guys got to stay to the very, very yes. end. But I'm just curious to know how that's fed your process. So um, the one thing that I always wanted to be, I always acted and I always sang, but the one thing I always wanted was to be a dancer. And it was the one thing I didn't have. And when we started doing this music and we realized dance music is so popular and everything, we were like, let's spin off of that. And let's let's take like these sultry, like soft vocals, but put it over that hard beat and see how it sounds. And it sounded so good. And it kind of, the character came from that. And it gave me like... It kind of matured me a little bit, and it gave me my character. And like, Bri yeah, you know, I'm Brienne, but Brie is a little more. Con it allows me to be a lot more confident and express myself, and feel a little sexy and like and cool, and you know, and that's kind of what this character has become. And. I love portraying that. Love it's it. the best part love of myself. It. I love it. <laughs> Thank love you. it. And the, the, we're referring to this new release, Overdose. Yes, yes. So the EP comes out in about a week, but the first single, Overdose, just came out, and the video should be out in like two weeks. And uh, yeah, so we'll have an album. We'll have an EP release. It's not a full album, it's just uh, like a half of one. Okay. Um, but we'll have an EP release um, July 22nd. Nice. At um, Grandstand in Queens. And uh, and we'll see how everyone likes it. But this is the next song that's coming up is is the big one. It's it's the big one. It's and the she's big sharing one. it with us here yes. first before she even does her EP release. So thank you for doing yeah. so. And yeah. Uh, and then uh, also we're inviting you to go check her out in Queens, right? Yes. Go thank, visit another please, borough. Please come, come. Yes. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna close out the show and then we can you can Sounds set us off with uh, overdose. How's Sounds that? Sounds good. All right. So once again for 
For more on Brie, visit her website at obrie, that would be O-H, music.com And that is our show today, mi gente. Thanks to all our guests for coming through and to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Don't forget, if you missed any part of the show, you can check out the Recablecast tonight and 24 hours a day at bronxnet.tv. And as always, I'm Rina Valentin. And from all of us here at Open, may the universe provide paz, prosperity, y amor. Adios. Have a happy Independence Day weekend. Enjoy. Be safe. I leave you with Brie Overdose. You're enticing. You're flowing through my bloodstream. I'm addicted to the way you love me. I'm intoxicated, mm. and I don't think I'm ever coming down. Something in the way you hold me close. This chemistry between you and me is taking control. Love's got me an overdose. Rocking body to body, getting closer with the lights now low. Got me an overdose, got me an over. Body to body, and there's no need to take it slow. Got me an overdose, got me an overdose. I'll be in the clouds When you kiss my lips I know it's true You're a drug I'm addicted to And I don't think I'm ever coming down There's something in the way you hold me close This chemistry between you and me is taking control Love's got me Dose. Rocking body to body, getting closer with the lights down low. Got me on overdose, got me on over. Rocking body to body, and there's no need to take it slow. Got me on overdose, got me on overdose, got me on overdose. No need to take it slow. Love's got Through my veins, I can't stop. I can't stop. Boy, you'll make me weak. I'm not as strong as you think. Oh no, there's something in the way you hold me close. No, this chemistry between you and me is taking control. Love's gone. Rocking body to body, getting closer with the lights down low. Got me on overdose, got me on over. Rocking body to body, and there's no need to take it slow. Got me on overdose, got me on overdose. Love's got me on overdose, no need to take it slow. Love's got me on overdose, got me on overdose. Love's got me on overdose, no need to take it slow. Love's got me on